And now, the Mole Mystery Theater. Presented by M-O-L-L-E. Mole, the heavier brushless shaving cream for tough whiskers or a tender skin. Good evening. This is Jeffrey Barnes, welcoming you to the Mole Mystery Theater, the program that presents the best in mystery and detective fiction. Our guest player tonight is Richard Widmark, up-and-coming young star of stage, screen, and radio. And our play, Double Cross, by Sanford Plessinger. This is the story of Carl Cummings, whose plan for murder is complicated by his inability to decide on his victim. He only knows that someone must be double-crossed, but who? Well, perhaps you'd like to match wits with our author, Mr. Schlesinger, and see if you can come up with the answer to that question before the final curtain falls. Well, mystery fans, there's a challenge that should turn out to be fun. But say, men, if you're up against the challenge of shaving tough whiskers or a tender skin, that's apt to be a different story. So to make it fun, shave with mole. Yes, sir, it's smooth. So smooth. It's slick. So slick. It's a smooth, smooth, slick, slick shave you get with M-O-L-L-E. Mole, the heavier brushless shaving cream for tough whiskers or a tender skin. Try it. Mole. And now for tonight's Mole mystery, Double Cross, starring Richard Widmar. idea was nuts right from the beginning. I should have taken a walk around the park the second I thought of it, gone home and forgotten everything. But I didn't. I just walked through the door of Twin Oaks, sat down at a table, and winked at trouble through the smoke, then waited for it to slink over. Hiya, sweetheart. Glad you got my uh, invitation. <laughs> How could I miss it? <laughs> Pull up a chair, but don't put your pretty elbows on the table and get them dirty. What do you want? Nothing on the menu. Oh, good night. No, no, don't go. No? What's to keep me? I don't know. I guess I'm just in the dumps. <laughs> Look, mister, I don't want to hear the next chapter, understand? You're in the dumps, so what? I'm in the dumps. So what? Everybody in this hole's in the dumps. And so what, and so what, and so what? Why'd you jump at a wink? Because I want a good time. Not more trouble. What's it going to be, mister? Neither tonight. I don't like you. Oh, that's too bad I like you. I'll pick you up tomorrow night. Say, what? Here's a hundred. Get yourself dolled up. I want you to look like a lady. Why, I You don't want the dough? Give it here. Tomorrow night at eight. How do you know I'll show? (laughs) You have an honest face. See you tomorrow night. Hey, don't... Oh, what's the big idea of ruining the whole bottle by tossing your cigarette in it? Someone else could have finished it. Oh, I forgot to tell you, that's a lousy habit I've always had. When I'm through with something, nobody else wants it. (laughs) That's the kind of guy I am, sister. Her name was Paula, Paula Stewart. Nice figure, coal black hair, and brown eyes that sparkled out the words danger ahead, the way those highway signs do at night when your headlights hit them as you come around a curve. Yeah, she had the curves, too. Paula was waiting for me the next night. She waited for me every night. I waited, too. I had something on my mind. In about two weeks, I knew it was safe to tell Paula just what that something was. How come the long drive out in the country? Running short in dough? Would that make any difference? Sure. <laughs> Thanks. This spot looks okay. Okay for what? I've got something to tell you. <laughs> this ought to be good. No, I've got to be on the level with you. Ah, don't do me no favors. It'll take more than a double cross to break my heart. Paula, I, uh, I married. For the love of Pete, is that what you dragged me 40 miles out in this no man's land for? Who cares? 
Paula, you're terrific. Come here. You're, you're pretty terrific yourself, a grown-up kid. <laughs> you know, you and I, we're a lot alike. We are? Yeah. We both like money. I was wondering where the payoff came in. I guess it's right here. Right here, baby. Okay. Deal. It's an insurance deal. I don't think I like the card. It's a good deal, Paula. How good? 50,000 bucks worth of chips in the kitty. 50,000? Oh, what's the gimmick? Murder. Hey, that's some gimmick you got there. It's my wife, Paula. She's the one who's insured. 50,000. Classy clothes, a swell apartment, ritzy nightclub. Paula, will you help me? Paula, will you please? Does that answer your question? I spent months looking for you, sweetheart. Months. When I spotted you at Twin Oaks, I said to myself, there she is, nobody else will fill the bill. Especially a bill for 50 grand. The next morning, there was an ad in the paper. Wanted, young woman to do light housework. Call in person. Mrs. Carl Cummings, 908 Webster Street. Call. Uh, this is our new maid, mister. Uh, Stuart, just call me Paula. Well, we're glad to have you with us, Amy. Oh, you'll never know how glad, Paula. Taking care of the house has been a big job. I'm sure it'll be easy with you here. Yeah, I'm sure it will. Is uh, dinner ready? I'm it's hungry. It's all ready. Uh, Paula, will you bring in the soup, please? Yeah, it's a pleasure, Mrs. Cummings. Well, what do you think, honey? I think she's perfect. Looks a lot like you, don't you think? Same figure, same height, same color hair. But her face, darling, her face. When the time comes, I'll fix that so nobody could recognize it. <laughs> I'll never forget that meal as long as I live. Amy. Lovely, sweet little Amy sitting there across the table from me trying to pretend that everything was as usual. Paula serving dinner. Dishes in her hands, money and murder in her head. Her eyes met mine. They dared me to double-cross her. I wondered then if she knew that I would. About ten o'clock, Amy and I went to our room. Not again, Carl. I, I know the plan backwards. Yes, Amy, again. You see the way she looked at me? Yes. I saw. I don't like the way you said that. Carl. What? Just what does this Paula mean to you? For the love of Mike, of all the dopey questions. You know what she means to me, nothing. Don't ever ask me anything like that again. Well, I won't. If you don't make me ask it. Now listen, and you listen good. I don't want to talk about it anymore. Paul is just a way for us to collect your insurance. All right, Carl. You have your reservations at the lodge? Tomorrow night. I'll go up there, stay for a couple of days, and next Tuesday night I'll be back. But you see that you're on that Tuesday train for Tucson. Oh, I, I already have my ticket. Tuesday afternoon, 3 o'clock. Good. I'll have my key. After I take care of Paula... I'll tear the house apart and make it look like a robbery. Then you'll go back to the lodge? Right. It's only a little over 50 miles. I can make it an hour. But are you sure that the police will believe that Paul is me? I told you I'd take care of that. I'm going out for a walk. I've got some thinking to do. I've got to figure every angle. Carl! What? Who do you love, Carl? It's like I told you, Amy. Don't waste time asking questions you already know the answers to. Nice night, ain't it? Well, oh, Paula. I saw you go out. Thought you might like company. Look, I don't think it was very smart of you to come out here. Suppose Amy... What do you care be... about her? I don't want anything to go wrong. Nothing will go wrong. Unless you make it go wrong. You were awful lovey-dovey with her tonight. So? So I think you're either a darn good actor or... Or what? I'm... I'm not so sure I know or what. All I know is I smell a rat. Believe me, honey, I've smelled plenty of them. Baby, there's no rat. What's the angle you've got to have in there? I don't know. I haven't figured it out. But then, I'm not very bright. Or do you already know that? Paula, it's all part of the end. Honey, I... I'm cold. Awful cold. You better go in the house. No, no, you don't get it. 
not that kind of cold. I'm scared. Now, look, if you want to back out... No, I'm not out... scared of that. Not in a million years. I'm scared because I've gone for you in a big way. I've never done that before. I don't want to get hurt. Paula, I'm crazy about you, too. Then put your arms around me. Oh, Carl. Still cold? I'd be a lot warmer if you'd kiss me. Oh. oh, Carl, I love you so much. A moment later, she'd gone, and I stood there alone in the darkness. My head felt like there was a lead pendulum inside, swinging back and forth. Hitting first on the right side, then on the left side of my skull. I saw Tuesday. I saw the lodge, the train for Tucson. $50,000 appear all at once and then dissolve into one bloody blotch. Leaving me with the one naked thought I'd been trying to hide from myself. Paula had gone into the house. She wasn't in my arms. And I was cold. New plans had to be made. New plans for Paula and me. Later, when I went up to my room, I knew the moment I stepped in the door that something was wrong. I glanced over to where the glow from the streetlight cut across Amy's bed. She wasn't there. Amy? Amy. Turn on the light, Carl. Amy, where are you? Turn on the light and you'll see. Sure. Amy, what's it? Amy, put down that gun. <laughs> Looks as if something has come between Carl Cummings and his wife, namely a loaded revolver. In just a moment, we'll bring you Act Two of tonight's Mole Mystery. Right now, here's Dan Seymour with a word about something that may come between a man and his razor. Men, if it's tough whiskers that come between your tender skin and your razor, shaving can be a painful affair. But you know, shaving needn't be do or die. Not if you shave with Mole, the heavier brushless shaving cream. Now, that's right. Mole is just the cream you need for wiry whiskers or a tender skin. Because it is a heavier cream, Mole not only softens your whiskers, it stands them up straight while your razor breezes right through them. With Mole, you shave faster, closer, easier, and you shave painlessly. Try it. See if you don't say it's smooth. So smooth. It's slick. So slick. It's a smooth, smooth, slick, slick shave you get with M-O-L-L-E. Mole, the heavier brushless shaving cream for tough whiskers or a tender skin. And now back to Act Two of Double Cross, starring Richard Widmark. Sit down, Carl. Put down that gun, Amy. What's, what, what's the matter with you? Sit down. No, over there on the edge of the bed. That's it. Amy, I... I, 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 I don't understand. So you wanted to go out walking. What kind of a fool do you take me for? You forget that I'm not an ignorant piece of trash you picked up a Twin Oaks. All right, all right. So I made love to Paula. It's just part of the act, honey. I was going to tell you about it. <laughs> it was really very funny. Was it? Sure, the dumb dame thinks I'm nuts about her. I thought you were nuts about me, too. Amy, I am. How do I know? Because I tell you, that's how. You told her, too. For oh, Pete's sake, honey, if I didn't love you, would I be killing for you? How do I know you didn't promise to kill for her? Stop talking like that! It's not true. You, you're dreaming all this up. More than a dream, Carl. It's a nightmare. When I saw you take her in your arms and kiss her, I had a thought. How much easier it would be for you to kill me? How much simpler it would be than our complicated little scheme? Amy. Come here. But I... Oh. Oh, God. I'm sorry I acted with It's all right, baby. It's all right. Don't cry. Hold me close, darling. Closer. Oh, I wish... I wish it were all over now. Just a few more days, <gasps> Amy. Just a few more days. Oh, 
those few days crawled and it wasn't all over. I didn't go to the lodge and mix up in the reservations I told Amy. Yeah, it was a mix-up, all right. And I didn't know just how to unravel the whole rotten business. The next week, I postponed my trip again. Amy nearly blew the roof off the house. What do you mean you're not going to the lodge? I told you, Amy, I don't feel good. And how do you think I feel? I'm telling you, Carl, I can't go on like this much longer. Either get this over and done with or forget it. Not so loud. You want Paula to hear? And that's another thing. I'm sick of whispering in my own home. I'm sick of the smug way she smiles at me as if I were the maid and she your wife. Amy, stop it. Every time she looks at me, she seems to say, you poor sucker, if you only knew what I know. What does she know that I don't know, Carl? Honey, you're imagining things again. And so are you if you imagine I'm going to stand for any more delays. Either you leave for the lodge next Saturday night All or... All right, Amy, next Saturday. No more delays? No more delays. I'll go downstairs and phone the lodge for reservation. Now see that you keep them this time. Don't worry, I'll keep them. Carl, it? It's Paula. You saw her going downstairs. You suppose she heard? There's only one way to find out you stay here. Paula. Paula? You wanted to see me, Mr. Cummings? Paula, come in here in the den. Hurry it up. What's the matter? Have a fight with her? Now, this is no time to start singing. It's all set. What's all set? The stage. The curtain's ready to go up. When's it coming down? That's all I'm interested in. Next Tuesday night. Saturday night, I'm going to the lodge. I'll be back Monday night, ransack the house. And, and take care of Amy. Then what? Then get back to the lodge. So far, I don't see what you need me for. Well, maybe that's one of the things I'm not supposed to see. You give me one hour to get back to the lodge, then you find a body and call the police. Oh. Hello? Who? Well, yes, she's right here. Hold on. It's for you. Thanks. Hello? You're early. From now on, call when I told you to. Yeah, yeah, I'm okay. Yeah, thanks for the buzz, Jerry. Yeah. Talk to you tomorrow night, huh? So long. Light me a, light me a cigarette, will you, Dreamboat? Who was that? Joe, just a friend. Why'd he call here? Just checking. Checking what? Checking to see if I'm okay. Carl, I'm such a dope. I'm, I'm always thinking somebody might stumble across me. So I told Jerry, this pal of mine, to call me every night. Jerry's a swell old guy. Sort of a mother to me, you might say. Why, you no, lousy. Just cool off, honey. If you're on the level with me, I'll keep right on talking with Jerry and everything will be okay. Dumb like a fox, aren't you, Paula? Mad? Mad? No, I guess not. Just a little hurt to think you don't trust me. It's not that I don't trust you, Carl, baby. Just that I'm nuts about you. And like I told you before... I don't want to get hurt. Don't worry, sweetheart. You won't get hurt. You know, somehow I got a feeling I won't either. Now, how about a nice, friendly cigarette, huh? We sat there in the den, our cigarettes filling the room with smoke. Only a tiny nightlight burned so we could stare at each other through the semi-darkness without being self-conscious. I felt my heart beat to Amy's pacing footsteps in our room just above the den. Paula heard them too, but they didn't bother her. She was expecting a phone call from Jerry, her pal, tomorrow night. She knew she was safe. Or was she? Saturday evening, I packed the leave for the lodge. I took along enough clothes to make it look like I intended to stay out my whole two weeks' reservation. By 7 o'clock, I was ready. Amy saw me out to the car. Be careful, Carl. Please be careful. Now, don't worry about me. You just be on that Tuesday train for Tucson. Yes, sir. And whatever you do, don't take anything with you. If Paula even guesses that you're going away she with... She won't. Now, kiss me goodbye. See you in Tucson, darling. Yeah. See you in Tucson. Two hours after leaving Amy, I was in my car, watching the lodge disappear in the rearview mirror, 
heading back home again. I'd arrived there an hour before, registered, gone to my room, leaving instructions not to be disturbed. I'd left through a rear window. No one had seen me leave. No one would see me return. My alibi would be perfect. I pushed the accelerator to the floor and I hit the road for murder at 90 miles an hour. It was 2.50 in the morning when I got home. Every window on the block was black. It had all be over in 15 minutes and I'd be heading back to the lodge. I was pretty proud of myself. Not a sign of a nerve. Like the thief I was supposed to be, I went into the house. As noiselessly as possible, I crossed the hall to the steps. Then up to the second floor. I stopped for a second. Outside her door. Long enough to catch my breath and get the gun out of my pocket. Then I opened the door. So long, sweetheart. This is Jeffrey Barnes again. In just a moment, we'll bring you Act Three of Double Cross. Now a word from George Putnam. One thing to remember about the most common type of dandruff is that many outstanding authorities say it is not a natural condition, but actually is caused by a germ called Pityrosporum ovale. Now, the only way you can get real relief is to destroy this germ. And simply washing or brushing away loose dandruff won't do it. But double dandrine will. Yes, double dandrine really works because it gets at the cause of this dandruff and kills it. Actually kills the germ on contact. Results with double dandrine have been remarkable even in many stubborn cases. And the thing that makes double dandrine so amazingly effective is a special ingredient, an active antiseptic that's so wonderfully efficient many hospitals use it. In double dandrine, we call it Alzan. So stop trying to combat this dandruff with ineffective methods that actually are no better than plain water. Use double dandrine and destroy the cause. Get double dandrine tomorrow. Your money back if not satisfied. There. Oh, Paula. Carl. I, I, I just did it. She's dead. Yeah. Yeah, I heard the shots. Yeah, you heard the shots. I suppose your friend called tonight. Oh, you, you can, you can put the gun away, Carl. I suppose you'll call again tomorrow night. I wouldn't try anything if I was you, Carl. Sorry, Paula. I've thought it all out. When two people know a secret, it's not a secret anymore. I've got to protect myself. Then all that talk about your loving me... I do love you, Paula, but I don't trust you just as you don't trust me. Carl, please. It wouldn't work, Paula. Someday there'd be a slip. I only get $50,000 out of this. I can't afford to take chances. Carl, don't. I'm going to miss you. Carl, I think I'll even miss Amy. Thanks, Carl. Uh, What? Now drop that gun. Amy! I said drop it. believe that Amy was still alive. But there she stood. Her blood reddening her nightgown where my bullet had hit. But alive. And a gun in her hand. Oh, Amy, my arm's tired. I've written out the whole story. What else do you want me to do? Sign your name. Oh. Carl Cummings. No. You sign it. Me? Why should I? As a witness. Oh. What are you going to do with this confession? Turn it over to the police? Pick up his gun, Paula. And give it to me. Pick it up by the barrel. Thank you. Amy, now. Now, now, look here. Let's... Oh! Oh! 
Amy. What did you do? Oh. No. No, Amy, for the love of him. Don't. Oh. Oh, please. Oh. Operator, get me the police department. The cops? Oh, you must be nuts. I'm getting out of here before... Stay where you are, Paul. This gun still has bullets in it. Hello, police department. This is Carl Cummings, 11 at 908 Webster Street. Please come at once. Something terrible has happened. Are you crazy? They'll arrest you for murder. Could have been an accident, Paul. Accident? After all, but I know Carl will be coming back tonight. I'm telling you he's going to lodge for two weeks. So naturally, when I saw a man prowling around the house, I, I thought it was a burglar. That's my story. If, if I live. Oh, I don't want any part of this. Sit down. You're not going anywhere. What are you going to do? Just wait for the police to get here. If I can. You're not going to make it, Mrs. Cummings. You're going to die. Any minute, Mrs. Cummings. Die when I'm ready. Stop polishing that gun and might go off. The police are coming, Paul. Please, Mrs. Cummings. Please don't make me stay here. I'm afraid you must. See, I haven't quite... The gun. All right, Mrs. Cummings, stay right where you are. Now Paula's in charge. <laughs> is she? You bet she is, honey. The first thing I'm going to do is take care of Carl's confession. And I can't think of a better place to get rid of it than in your fireplace. They won't do, Paula. Shut up. And now so long, Mrs. Cummings. And don't think it ain't been nice. You just burned your chance to escape, Paula. Huh? Oh, you're talking crazy. Why do you think I was polishing that gun? How should I know? I didn't want my fingerprints on it. I didn't want anyone's fingerprints on it. Except yours. You're holding the gun that shot Carl. What are you getting at? You're also holding the gun that... that shot me. What? No! The police are here, Paula. I hope you have a good story for them. I do... Oh. Mrs. Cummings. Mrs. Cummings. Oh, it's the cops. Mrs. Cummings, are going to blame me. But I didn't do it. You've got to tell them I didn't kill you. Don't leave me alone, Mrs. Cummings. You've got to tell them. Mrs. Cummings, you've got to tell them. Mrs. Cummings, you've got to tell them. You've got to tell them, Mrs. Cummings. Now, this is Jeffrey Barnes inviting you to be with us next week when the Mystery Theater presents Beautiful Silence, starring Barry Kroger. The original music for the Mystery Theater is composed and conducted by Alexander Semler. Richard Widmark was starred. Any similarity between the names and characters used on this show and any actual persons, living or dead, is purely coincidental. <laughs> Sometimes when we're tired, we make mountains out of molehills. We putter around till even the easiest job seems impossible. If you're that tired and pale besides, your doctor may find you have a borderline anemia, resulting from a ferronutritional blood deficiency. Then you need ironized yeast tablets. They help build up your strength by building up your red blood cells. So take ironized yeast tablets to get back your color, your vigor, your driving energy. Ironized yeast tablets. And now this is Dan Seymour again, saying good night until next week at this same time when the Mystery Theater presents Beautiful Silence. <laughs> This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.